Now I want to think a bit more about viscosity and irreversibility, um, disordered motion and ordered motion. Uh, and this is more of a descriptive um, little note rather than uh, anything more formal. Um, it, let's zoom in on a gas and we know we've got lots of molecules and they're all zooming around uh, at lots of different speeds and lots of different directions and we take a sort of clump of those and we average over those to get uh, a sort of an average velocity note there I've said velocity uh, it has a vector um, and therefore would be of the ordered motion I say ordered in that the whole clump for example is moving in that direction at some velocity v that's what I mean by the velocity of the ordered motion uh, and if you look at the kinetic energy of the ordered motion um, that would be related to well you sort of get a half rho because it's per unit volume say uh, v squared where v would be the uh, the velocity vector um, on the other hand there's a lot of extra motion in, in, in there that we've missed out because these molecules are moving around so quickly. Uh, there's an enormous amount of energy in disordered motion. So um, we can look at the kinetic energy of the disordered motion. Uh, this is measured by the speeds of each molecule. Um, and uh, note the difference between the speeds and the vel velocity. The speeds is just how fast they're moving around. Uh, and the energy of that um, is really measured by temperature. Now in thermodynamics uh, you come across the steady flow energy equation which says that if you have uh, going into here no heat flow and no work being done on this gas then uh, the enthalpy plus a half V squared is equal to a constant. Uh, now let's imagine we're looking for the sake of this argument at something with constant specific heat capacity the enthalpy can be written as CPT plus a half V squared then for the velocity of the ordered motion is equal to constant and let's look at what these terms are CPT here uh, is essentially if you like the kinetic energy of the disordered motion whereas the half V squared here, um, by the way that's per unit mass, uh, is the kinetic energy of the ordered motion. And it's equal to a constant if we're not doing, not adding any heat, we're not doing any work on that system. So you can see there's a sort of physical explanation there for the terms in the steady flow energy equation. And you can also see why uh, if the velocity of the ordered motion goes down the half V squared term reduces, then the temperature goes up, um, which is something that you'll see or you will have seen in thermodynamics. So let's imagine two layers of fluid, um, one of them going at velocity V1 V uh, with mass m, and the other one going with velocity V2 again with mass m. Let's think about the uh, kinetic energy of the ordered motion here it's just a half m v1 squared for the top one plus v2 squared for the bottom one that's of the ordered bulk motion now imagine that they mix and that at the end you've got one quantity of mass 2m that's got an average velocity <coughs> a velocity now of v1 plus v2 over so the kinetic energy of ordered motion here uh, is a half times 2m times v1 plus v2 squared over 2 squared which is 4. So let's think of this kinetically, another term in, in terms of atoms and molecules. We can imagine all the molecules that are zooming around in here with an average bulk velocity of v1. We've got all the molecules zooming around in this bit of fluid that have an average or bulk velocity of v2. Here they're zooming around, as we'll find out, a little bit faster than they were before, having collided with each other, but they've exchanged uh, their bulk velocity to average it out to v1 plus v2 over 2. So let's look at the change in the kinetic energy of the ordered motion. Now this is equal to uh, a half m v1 squared plus v2 squared, which is what it was before, minus 
a half times 2m v1 plus v2 squared over 4. Now you can do this sum and you'll find that that's equal to a quarter m v1 minus v2 squared. Now because of the squared term here it's always positive. You'll notice that little check when delta v is equal to 0 there's no loss in kinetic energy of altered motion and as uh, v1 minus v2 or delta v increases uh, we get an increased loss of kinetic energy of ordered motion. Now where's that gone? Well of course we know from the steady flow energy equation or we know from just thinking about this physically uh, it can't have gone, uh, the molecules collide off each other elastically so it hasn't disappeared it's gone to disordered motion. In other words the temperature has increased. So we can get that argument by thinking about the molecules uh, if we want to. But if you were to talk in terms of a continuum, you'd say that this was a viscous process. In other words, it's, it's really due to the fluid's viscosity and the fact that these molecules exchange momentum by bumping into each other. That's uh, In the continuum model we talk about that being a viscous process um, has led to an increase in disorder or more specifically the energy of the disordered motion and an increase in temperature. Now a physicist would say that uh, because the degree of disorder has increased you've got an increase in entropy and therefore it's irreversible. And so you get this idea that when you've got molecular motion and you've got a velocity gradient you get an irreversible process um, and that this in a continuum sense uh, is a viscous process so viscosity this is what I wanted to get to uh, is essentially you can think of it as causing irreversibility now these are only sort of this is for physical understanding I've done this um, it's not enormously rigorous but I think it gives you a good understanding of uh, the relationship between molecular motion, uh, velocity gradients, viscosity, irreversibility, and the steady flow energy equation, disordered motion, and ordered motion.